God brought y'all in this house this morning and got you out of that bed. Let's come on and give God just a little bit of praise. Amen. Well, I don't know about you, but it's too many days of blessed things to me. And I choose this morning. I say, well, today is my birthday. Spend the day with me, but the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go with my extended family first thing this morning because God still got something for me to bring to them. Amen? Amen. And so I sat on this day all week long, and the day I got up and I was ready. Amen. I was happy. And I got this song perfectly. I don't know who all this is going to fit, but this song here just touched my heart, and I'm pretty sure everybody in here going to agree on this one. Amen? Amen. And I want everybody to. Since you're my extended family, I don't want nobody sitting there not doing anything. You don't have to get up out of your feet, but I need you to practice. We will all be one choir up in here today. Amen? Yeah. Now, the song goes, when I rose this morning, I didn't have no doubt. Amen? Amen. Amen.
Riverside. Good morning. It's good to be back with you once again to the Deacon Deaconess's Mother's Missionary Christian Friends, Bishop Actea Ms. Hanson's First Lady. I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I thank Brother Oliver for coming down with me this morning and help uplifting the name of the Lord. I can have him come down on Sundays for y'all if y'all want to get him down. I get a small cut. I'll let y'all use him on Sunday mornings. But I thank, I thank God for him for, for coming and, uh, and uplifting his name. It's been, it's been an eventful week. It's been an eventful month. I came this morning and uh, it's, it's, it's such a joy to come in and uh, hear the Sunday school lesson and uh, what's going on in Sunday school. Well, I get a little worried sometimes. I think the uh, Deacon Smalls, I think they have a microphone at my house because uh, they also got a camera because those guys, man, they, they, they uh, sometimes they'll be touching on my message pretty good. But you know, I thank God for that. Amen. He said something this morning in Sunday school, man. And it been resonating with me all week. He said, uh, Jesus, the one who was, the one who is, and the one that's still yet to come. Amen. Jesus has been all those things. And you know, he had to have a beginning. And today, uh, we're going to look at his beginning in Luke chapter 2. That's that's where, uh, that's where the thought will be coming from. Uh, from Luke chapter 2. We're going to be looking at Christmas. Christ's first coming. Christmas. Uh, the world that we live in today, uh, they have changed the meaning of well, what we says. The Bible says, whatever day you set aside for me to praise me, to honor me, to give me glory, that's the day. Now, we know December 25th is not the birth of Christ because the Bible doesn't tell us. But that's the day that we have set aside to give him honor, to give him praise, to say that is the day that our Savior came into this world. But the world has has just walked all over that. Now, we when I was a kid, we used to have Christmas. It was Christmas. You know, it was fun time. Mama was big, and you smelled like a fruitcake that I never ate. You know, it was all it was the fun time of year. Yeah, yeah. Now is happy holidays. What is happy holidays? So even the even the even the day that we have set aside for Christ, we have moved away from that. Now it's no longer Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas to all. To telling them that you know what, me myself, I am thankful. I am grateful for this day that we have set aside for his coming. Because when he, his coming took all that sin off my back. His coming was redeeming me, bringing me back to the God that I was separated from. It took him 40 and two generations to get here, but when he got here, look at all the wonders that he did. So Jesus had a beginning. Christ had a beginning. And this is the day, this is the time of year, and this is the day that we have set aside, which is December 25th, <coughs> to celebrate his birth. That's what we use to celebrate his birth. In 14 days, we'll have that celebration. And in about 20 days, this year will be done. If we live to see it. But you know what? Whether I make it or not, God was God yesterday. He's God this morning. And if tomorrow's to come, he'll still be God. So now, that's why I have my trust that. That's why I have my faith that. I have my trust in God. Because little old me can do nothing without him. Laid down last night, didn't know whether I was going to get up this morning, but with his grace and his mercy extended to me once again to allow me to come down yeah. to first sign. Yeah. 
And I thank you for that. I give him praise for that. I give him honor for that. Because he didn't have to do it, but he did. And I thank him. In the name of his son, Jesus, I thank him. He's so, he's so precious to me now. When I was a young, when I was a young lad, it wasn't as, as precious to me then as he is now. But you know, I got more sunsets than I believe I got sunrises. So I want to keep thinking while I have the chance. I want to thank him and I want to praise him. I want to lift him up. And you know what? I, I want to tell somebody else. You know what? I feel good being in the Lord. I feel good knowing that Christ is my Savior. And that's the charge that he's given to each and every one of us this morning. To go out and tell somebody about this Jesus that we're about to celebrate his birth. He said, go out and tell somebody. The other thing that Small said this morning, he says, that, that devil is a lie, but that's all right. I'll get back to it. But my, this is why we're here. This is why we're here this morning, my sisters and brothers. Well, we have, uh, we have lights. We have trees in our, you know, the Christmas tree in our house. We got the lights in our house. We we have all these outward appearances showing the world about Christmas. But do we have the love of God in our heart when Christmas is all about? Christmas is about love. Because if the Father didn't love us, he wouldn't have sent his son to redeem us. We'd have still been marred in sin and hell would be our because the Bible says there is no way that I can save myself. It says, I know that without the redemptive blood of Jesus Christ, hell would be my home. I, this, this much I know. So now, this morning, we're going to talk about his birth. But then, with his birth, come this great love. The love of God extended to us through his son, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Of all the things that were created, all the things that were created, God spoke them into existence. Yeah. Yeah. You and I, he came down and he knelt and he molded us with his hands. Yeah. And then, I like this one, he says, and then I into your nostrils the breath of life. So when he breathed into me, he gave me a part of him. So then I belong to God. I am, I belong to him. But I was separated from him through sin. So what he did, he sent his son, the Christ, this Christmas, this Christ, this gift. This precious gift. He sent this gift to redeem me and bring me back into a right relationship with him. So now while we celebrate it, nothing wrong with celebrating. Celebrating the, the holiday season, all that. But let us remember why we're celebrating. Amen, amen, amen. Glory. We're not celebrating to run down the coals and buy all the stuff on our credit card. And then next year we're trying to pay them off. That ain't what Christmas is all about. No. Christmas is about love. Yeah. Christmas is about giving. Giving you, sister. Giving you, brother. You know what? Merry Christmas to you. I'm glad Christ is in your life. Mm -hmm. Merry Christmas. I'm glad Christ is in your yeah. life. Yeah. To my grandchildren, to my great-grandchildren, yes, the little toys, yes, yeah, we do those things. We give, we give gifts. But the greatest gift we have is telling them about the love of God, yeah. who God is, yeah. and letting them know that Christ is their Savior. Yeah. That Christ is the only way to get back to God. Glory. That's the gift that we should be giving out during this Christmas season. Of all the gifts we give, let us make sure that we let them know who our Lord and Savior is, that it is the Christ. So the good news of, of uh, December 25th, yes, the day we set aside for the birth of Christ, 
But the good news of December 25th is love. Mm -hmm. The good news of December 25th should teach each and every one of us to love E one another. Amen. He said, if you love ye one another like I love you, because while yet you were in sin, I sent my son on this particular day to redeem you, to bring you back. So we were lost. We were lost. We were absent. And unfortunately, we still have individuals who have not come into the knowledge of the truth, which is Jesus Christ. I have family members, I'm sure you do. You have some who you're trying to bring back. Just, just keep tugging at them. Just keep tugging at them. Give them little bites. You know, they, they don't want a whole sandwich, but you just keep keep giving them little bites. Yeah. Let them know that this Christmas, yeah. this time of year, the good news is a person. Mm -hmm. The good news is Christ. Yeah. Christmas is Christ. This great gift of this time of year is the birth of our Lord and our Savior, the Christ. Let, just give them small nuggets of that. I was once where a lot of them are. You gave me too much, I, I run away from you. I, I don't hear that. And, and that, that's the way some of our young people are today. Let's, let's give them small snippets and let's lead them in the way that they should go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you live your life Christ-like yeah. and they see you, yeah. say, you know, there's something different about him. Yeah. There's something different about her. Not only is God blessing you, but they can feel and they can see the glow about you. Yeah. Individuals you've never met before in your life. They said, you know, do uh, you go to church? Yes, ma'am. Uh, where do you go to church at? A, B, and C. <clears throat> you a preacher? Uh, yes, ma'am. I'm, I'm a minister. I minister God's, God's word. Well, there was something about you. Not, nothing that I said because I don't push. I push God on nobody. But if you ask me about him, then I get happy. Yeah. If you ask me about him, I'll tell you about him. That's why I don't mind telling you this morning, Zion, that this Christmas gift... This is a gift from God. This is something special. This is a person in Jesus Christ. This is what God sent down to redeem us back to him. And I love him so. When I say this is love, in, 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 the, in the book of John, uh, John 3 and 16, he said, For God, our Father, so loved that he sent his son on this Christmas day to redeem us. So whomsoever, that means you, that means you, that means your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, that means the one down on the corner, that means the one rolling dice, whomsoever, yes. whomsoever shall believe. Yeah. Man, you could be saved. Yeah. And it's not, see how easy that was? And then we got individuals that, that is making the life in Christ so difficult, but it's not. Christmas time, gift giving time. Give this gift of God to as many individuals yeah. as you can. Yeah. This is gift of time. Yeah. To us, a child is born. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Word of God. Unto us, a child is given. Given yeah. for me yeah. and you. I'm going to send my son. My son. Christmas, this gift. I'm going to give it to you. All you have to do is accept it. Here we go. All you have to do is accept it. And if you're lying to him, he said, he'll be the prince of peace in your life. All the things that you need, not that you want, all the things that you need, I'll have him provide for you in his name. God says, in Jesus' name, I'll provide all these things for you. You cannot, you will not continually be blessed with God with doubt. Now, when you pray the prayer, leave the prayer. And believe that he will fulfill it. Amen. This morning, it was so blessed because, you know, we pray. And then in the morning, we want to see 
in the driveway. In the morning, we want to see in the cupboard. You didn't wait on anything. He said, I won't teach you patience, but I'll put you in a position where you'll learn. So I have a bad leg. I've been limping on this leg for six years now. He said, limp on. When you get to me, you'll have a new one. <laughs> Maybe I had to fix that one. But you know what? When you get to me, you'll have a new one. It's, it's all right. It's, it, it's all right. Mm -hmm. Patience. Wait. I say, wait yes. on the Lord. Glory. Jesus. We need peace. I, I, heard, I heard some terms this morning. I think it was Sugar Hill. Was that right? See, I always, I always, only, only thing I knew was Adams Run, and then, then I know Hollywood now. But see, I, I didn't, I didn't know the, the, the little names of the communities. But I know we need peace down here. We need peace in Adams Run. We, we need peace in Hollywood. You need peace in your home. I need peace in my home. We need peace on the road while we're traveling because people do crazy stuff. Amen. I'm an old man. I don't look in nobody's car when I'm turning. I don't want I don't want no troubles out there on that road. I don't want no troubles in wall. I don't want, I just don't want no troubles. I am just as nice as you allow me to be. And when then when you don't allow me to be nice no more, I know to get in my car and go home. And I ain't coming back. You know, the young people, I right, wait till I come back. Believe that if you want to. I ain't coming back. I'm gonna tell you right now. Because of the love that God has placed in my heart, yeah. those, those days are gone. Yeah. What Christ, what God has done for us through his son Jesus, he says, for he had made him sin for us who had no, no sin. Yeah. So you and I wouldn't have to carry that burden. So remember, on in 14 days, when, when we wake up and, we, and 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 I know we know we're gonna have the table laid out and the grandkids gonna be running, and that and that's great. That that that's wonderful. But remember that this gift, this gift is Jesus. This gift is salvation. Yeah. This gift is a gift that's eternal. All the little things that, that I can acquire that God allows me to acquire here because everything I have above nothing came from him. So the little things that he'll let me acquire here, no, they're going to pass away. But that eternal. What's eternal? If I, can, if, if, if I can line up, if I can do what thus says the Lord and heaven is my home eternally, that's a long time. Forever, you take the four off ever, that's a long time. And I want to be with God forever. I don't want to be no place else forever but with him. I, I, I don't want to stay here forever. But this world will consume you. The, the amount of energy that it takes each and every one of us to, to, to make a day in, in this world, it, it, it's tremendous. Because it's always working at us. Someone is always working at us. But I am so grateful that God gave us this gift. This gift that we can rely on. This gift that's a this gift not only uh, take care of the senses of the eyes, but it goes in and it starts to work on the heart. This gift works on the heart of man. And that is such a wonderful thing. This gift, this gift that we're receiving from this loving Father, it's been foretold. We have seen it. Deacon Small says he was, he is, and he still is to come. That's where we are at in this Christmas gift. That's this good news of this Christmas gift. God's greatest gift to us was giving us his son yeah. on this Christmas day. And I really think that that, that 
is one of the main things that we should be not only getting over to our families, but we're ambassadors of Christ. I mean, we can easily don't force him on nobody because he, he, God does not need to be proven. He has proven himself. For a man that believes in him, no proof is necessary. For a man that don't, no proof is enough. I, it doesn't matter. I mean, this, this right here tells me that God is God. He'll look at the same thing I'm looking back at. I don't believe that. But it's not necessary for you and I. For us, to, we should never be argumentative about the word of God. We should give it in truth and we know that it's and move on. We never should be argumentative. So as we go into this Christmas season and this Christmas in this festive time of year with family and with friends, let us never forget the true meaning of what us, man, has set aside the day to celebrate the birth of Christ. We have set that aside for his birth. And how do we get to that point? It says uh, Joseph and Joseph and Mary, Jesus' mother, you know, they had to go back to, to their home in order for Joseph to pay taxes. So he goes back home, and here is uh, Mary giving birth. And this came to me from Luke chapter 2, and it was fascinating. It says, other than Joseph and Mary, the first person who knew Christ was here were the shepherds. Not the king, not the queen, not the priest. He said the shepherds, the one that were out there taking care of of somebody else. They were out there taking care. So he, God allowed them to be the first to know that his son was here. Yeah. Yeah. And then it says, then, then it says they started singing. And then a host of angels joined in. Yeah. Yeah. Well, ain't, ain't that one? Right. Here we got this newborn baby, swaddling cloth. I've got, Swallowing cloth, some rags. Hopefully they were clean. And here is he lying in a manger. And you got the shepherds and a host of angels giving him praise and giving him honor. Oh, Let him know that, hey, we thank the Lord for sending him down here to do what you said he would do. And here we are with all the trappings that God has allowed us to have. And we got our head down. Moping. Talking about folk, but that's another day. But look at what God has done for us in the person of his son, Jesus Christ, who he allowed to come into this world as a baby for you and I. He said the word Christ became flesh and dwelt among us. So I had I had given you the written word. So now here is my son becoming flesh and it's going to dwell among you. And from the time Jesus was from Jesus' teen years on he always talked about the kingdom. The kingdom. The kingdom of God. I come to do my father's work. The work of the king. So you and I. On this continuous. Forward path that we are going on. We should always be doing. Work for the king. Because that's what we are charged to do. Work for the king. My sisters and my brothers. I've had a wonderful time this morning. It enlightened my soul. It made my spirit happy to be with you this morning. And if, if, you, if you remember this, if you remember this, on Christmas morning, it's a gift from God. That, that are underneath the little tree. I, I got I, I I appreciate all 
that. But this gift yeah. from God yeah. is the one that's going to hold eternal. Tell your children. Tell your grandchildren. This gift, free gift, no doubt, is from God. I have done what thus says the Lord. May the Lord bless and keep you. It's my prayer.
around the state. Father, keep your protection, heads of protection around mankind everywhere. Dear Lord, because we are your children. Father, your word says so. You said that you breathe into us the breath of life. So we are your child. Father God, as we come this morning, dear Lord, we ask that you touch the sick and the shed in everywhere. Touch those behind prison walls. Father, reach your hand down and help that one that is down there, Lord, and don't know where else to turn. Let them know, Father, that in your name, all things are possible. With man, Father, we can only do what's allowed through your grace and your mercy. So, Father, as we close out this part of our prayer, Father God, I ask that you lift us up. Stir us, dear Lord. Start a revival in each and every heart that's here. In the name of your son, Jesus. Let every heart say amen.